Yeah, hello, I'm Retro Jules, and welcome to World of Tanks. And welcome to my garage. This is my M4 Sherman, Tier 5 American medium tank. One of the first tanks I really enjoyed playing, and still one of my favourite tanks, and I come back to it again and again, either to complete missions, or when I'm doing really, really rubbish at higher tiers, and I come back to this tank every time and still really enjoy playing it. It is a very effective mobile support tank with an excellent gun and highly adaptable on the battlefield and just over 49,000 of them were manufactured by the Americans so it can't be a bad tank if they made that many. So the armour is fairly weak with 50mm on the front and 38mm all round but angling the front can help bounce light tank shells and some mediums, but it isn't that reliable. The turret armour is better at 63 all round, with a very well armoured mantlet. The 76mm cannon has an excellent penetration of 128, the highest in its class, with a good damage of 115 and a very average aim time of 2.3 seconds. But despite the good penetration, damage and a decent 4.2 second reload, this gun has a terrible accuracy of 0.43. One of the worst and it'll let you down when you're sniping at very long distances. It has a very middle of the road but decent speed of 48 km per hour and its slightly poor power to weight ratio means acceleration is a little bit slow but not a problem for what is essentially a support tank with a very average chassis rotation of 37 degrees per second. It does have one of the slowest turret traverses of also 37 degrees per second, which can cause you problems if you let the enemy get too close. It has an amazing gun depression of 12 degrees, the best in its class, and along with a strong mantlet and nicely shaped fairly tough turret means this tank is very suited to playing ridge lines and hills and can be played hull down which trains you nicely for the excellent tier 7 T29 another favorite tank of mine if this tank is hull down then forget engaging it head-on instead try to flank it take advantage of its poor turret traverse and get in close to penetrate its weak hull armor now the equipment I carry is geared up to make this an effective spotting machine with coated optics, binoculars and a gun laying drive just to try and help with the slow aim time. My crew are trained in six tenths, snapshot to help with dispersion, dead eye to try and help with the poor accuracy, repairs and they're currently training in situational awareness again to try and help my spotting ability. I tend to use this tank as, as an effective spotting machine because it has an excellent 370 meter view range which beats all the other tier 5 mediums by 20 meters so you're going to see the tanks coming before they see you. I really like this tank I've used it as a scout mostly as a support tank to avoid direct engagements and I've even used it as a tank destroyer just sitting still and picking off the already spotted enemies even with the inaccurate gun this tank is an excellent all-rounder now depending on your play style will govern where you progress from this tank if using armor and hull down tactics suit you then you'll want to progress to the nicely armored Sherman Jumbo and then onto the as I've already mentioned, excellent T29 Heavy with its impenetrable turret. Or if you like to be on the move, mobile and active, then the Sherman Easy 8 is the next tank for you, which will take you on to the medium line of the T20 Pershing and Patterns. But do be aware that the American mediums at higher tiers do have some of the weaker penetrations on their guns. American tanks are my favourite line of tanks and I really enjoy playing the M4 Sherman and let me show you this tank in action.
We're on Westfield in the rain. It's a tier three to five, and we're top tier in our M4 Sherman medium. Hurrah! And it's an encounter battle. Capture the base. And I'm going to head straight up to the top of the viaduct at E0. And the plan was to travel right along the zero line and just basically spot and shoot at anything that was heading straight for the cap. But as it happens, it, the game didn't quite pan out that way and I end up pretty much playing this tank as a tank destroyer and just sitting in one position and just picking off all the targets that have been spotted for me. So we've got two tank destroyers heading centrally down the valley. We've got one of our light tanks up at the corner of the village. And I'm pretty much up here on my own with a heavy slowly catching up. So I plan on just sitting here and just waiting for something to appear until I've got a little bit of support and then I realise with the tank destroyers rolling forward they would have spotted anything for me so while this isn't the most sort of active game for the showman it just shows you that even though the accuracy isn't great it can still snipe quite nicely and we're going to be set on this corner for most of the game in tank destroyer mode and that's how adaptable this tank is terrible shot on the T-46 and we missed a blind shot too and we get a nice shot into the Panzer and finish them off first kill so I've got a bit of support up here with me now so if anything does spot me hopefully I'm not the only target that's going to get shot at that so the T-40 is going straight for a cap oh one of our brethren over there oh that shot went flying past and because this gun is quite inaccurate at a distance you certainly don't want to shoot until you're fully aimed we get one in the tracks oh no idea what I was shooting at there that M4 is bombing it downhill and oh that's better that's what we like a nice static target to shoot at and kill number two Oh, and there's the T-46 giving one of our tanks a hard time. We've got enemies in the base. Take them out. Releasing target. And Enemy we finish them off. And a T-67 up on the hill. Not even facing in our direction, which is good. Get a shot in. And they're finished off. And we're on three kills. Very nice. Three and a half minutes into the game. We'll just come around the corner to see who's up on the hill. We'll take the T-70 out. And it is a really good gun. When, you, when you're top tier, it does excellent damage. It's almost like you're a heavy with the damage that this does on lower tiered tanks. And that's the first damage we've taken in the game. And we finish the Sherman off. Now that AT-2, the bulletproof AT-2, we get a lovely shot on the Capola, but he causes our team a little bit of aggravation. So they've got their most heavily armoured tank capping. And I'm just trying to get out of trouble here, because I'm up here on my own now. And I just don't want to get shot. So I'm on a smidge of health now. 
5 tank kills and 11 penetrating shots, I'm quite happy with that. Certainly done our bit in this game. Now we'll just see what more we can do. So the T1 heavies side on. Get a lovely shot and track him. He's you need to aim for the engine really from this distance. Better. One more. Lovely. Kill number six. That's our top gun medal. So we've easily got them outnumbered, but they have got their heavily armoured AT capping. Now this is where I make a bad mistake. I didn't realise that the M3 Lee had quite good elevation on its gun. So I thought I was really safe up here. And he's coming round on me. Get a shot in and yeah. I just didn't think he had the elevation to shoot me, but I can see from that view there that actually, yes, he did. So, lesson learned from that one. So, that's my burning crisp of a tank. You win some, you lose some, but, you know, definitely done our bit in this game. So, we'll watch the rest of the game play out. Two heavies and artillery. So, really, we should have this game sus, but it's quite surprising that our team don't really have experience of the AT-2 tank destroyer and they do a lot of auto aiming and they bounce a lot of shots when really they had a chance to take this tank destroyer out quite early by aiming at his cupola. So we've got the French BDR heavy trying to pick him off and he's taking relentless fire from that tank destroyer And the BDR is a very large target. Haven't seen any shots looping in from Artie. Artie could easily take that tank out if it's got a line of sight. So the BDR is going in for the kill. So it really needs to know the AT's weak spots if it's going to do that. We've got a heavy coming up behind. Artie's going straight in to try and shotgun him. There's the T-14, so luckily for us we've got quite a heavily armoured heavy going in. But this T-14 I don't think knows how the AT-2 works. So the BDR's just been taken out. And it looks like he's just auto-aiming, which is not going to work. He needs to get behind from there, he had an ideal opportunity and he's just auto aiming at the front and he really needs to aim for that cupola at the top because he is getting hammered this isn't looking good Ah, that T14 really had the ideal opportunity to finish the AT2 out and the AT2 just stayed front on, putting shots in. So we lost that game. But we've got 30,000 silver, 2,500 XP, 1,300 damage, second class mastery badge, top gun medal, high calibre. I'm borderline with, I've got two marks of excellence on the tank and I'm borderline between one and two. So I keep dipping in and out of that depending on how well I do in the games. Got a couple of missions in there. And we came top by doing by far the most damage. And I just had a little track along here because there was a medal that came up that I hadn't seen before. Keep going, Retro. That's the one. Ranger. Not seen that before. Destroy all enemy light tanks. At least three in the course of a battle. So that was a that was a new medal for me. So a very effective game in the M4 Sherman, even though we didn't survive and we didn't win. But we certainly played our part and pretty much played it as a tank destroyer. Let's get this show on the road. We're on Sand River at night. It's a tier 5 game, pretty much. And I do like games that are evenly tiered like this. It, it gives everybody a fighting chance of enjoying the game. Everyone can play to the strengths of their tanks. And not have to account for a tank that's two tiers above them and how are they going to take it out. We can just play this strategically and fairly. So I'm heading for G5, G6. 
There's a nice little spotting point right in the middle of the map there. Uh, we haven't got any light tanks, so I'm going to take it upon myself with my binoculars to try and do a bit of spotting. Again, that's the flexibility of the M4. We can get there nice and quickly. And here's the spot we want, but it doesn't quite work out for me. So we spotted the, the VK already, get a shot in, pull back, spotted loads of them up on the hill there, just need to be careful now, because that VK has lit us up. And immediately I'm taking fire, bouncing nicely off the turret, that is the strength of this tank, a couple of shots in the engine and oh, I'm down to a third of the health and I've We've done nothing yet, apart from spotting. So, that's it. I'm out of there. Because they know I'm there, and it's just not a good spot for me anymore. And if you look on the map, a heavy's gone straight in, down the riverbed to where I was. So I probably escaped a lucky death there. Right, T-67. Yep. Yeah can't shoot through rocks again I fired that shot without fully aiming you just cannot afford to do that in this tank you can't afford to do that in any tank but especially when your accuracy is this bad right one tank destroyer taken out great the more of them pesky buggers we take out the better so I'm now heading for sort of the B6 where there's a heavy We've got one of our heavies and a tank destroyer who have taken the, the mountain pass at the back. Oh, ideal. Oh. And again, I'm taking, I'm snapping these shots without fully aiming, and it's just a complete waste of time. All I'm doing is missing and exposing myself by firing. So, time to concentrate. Right, a KV and a KV-1S. The KV-1S will quite easily one-shot me with my health. Not sure about the KV. Right, KV's nicely side-on. Lovely shot in the turret. Still side-on. Oh, this is a nice easy target. Not interested in us at all. And that's the M4 flanking superbly. Shooting the targets that aren't shooting at us. So the KV-1S is going up to the back of the mountain to the right. KV-1 down in the riverbed. So this is where I'm hoping to sneak up, sneak up on the KV-1S. Hoping he's engaging the heavy and the tank destroyer. And try and get some engine shots. But he's going in aggressively and he's rolled straight in. Taking the tank destroyer out. So I'm going to try and help this heavy and uh, that's changed the gameplay somewhat. Do not want to take a shot from the 1S. Get a lovely engine shot. Just cannot afford to take a shot from that tank. Try a shot on the Capola but just don't pull it off. So highlighting the 1S, hopefully artillery's looking that way and they disappear from the map and I'm a little bit nervous here because I'm not quite sure which way that tank's gonna go so I plan on trying to go up here and sneak round fully aware that any minute that KV-1S could appear at the top doing exactly the same thing and the only advantage I've got is with my gun depression I should be able to get the first shot in as it comes over and hopefully track the tank or get a shot in and run. So no idea where that 1S is. We've got the heavy going in. That's C8, so that's going to help. And I get a bit confused here because I don't really know what's happened. There's no sign of the KV-1S. We've got some burning crisps down here. Not sure what's what down here. But there's no sign of the KV-1S at all. So... I reckon Artie must have done a blind shot 
and taken the KV-1S out. Never saw it. The KV-1S certainly wasn't highlighted again after we spotted it. So, anyway, it's gone. So, that's that little nervous session over with. So, the plan is now... It's, it's relatively even. Oh, we're, we're two tanks up now, so we've definitely got the upper hand and with two artillery. So I'm going to head straight along the back of the map here towards their starting point to see if I can find Artie. And it's a very average game for us at the moment. We've got a little bit of assisted spotting damage. We've taken two tanks out, which isn't bad. But nothing amazing at this stage. But this, this gameplay just shows you the, the adaptability of the M4. It's fast enough to, to cover the map and travel the map and get to any location we need to get to. So we had a tank destroyer pop up. Wolverine up on the hill. And Artie's up there. Oh! Dreadful shot. Get a shot in Artie. Do we get another shot in Artie? Yes, they're completely oblivious to me being here. Now we just need to get a shot in the Wolverine. We track the Wolverine. So if we can just edge forward. There we go, we've got a nice shot on it now. Nice shot in the engine. One more shot will do it. Lovely. Four kills. That's better. Right. KV-1. Down in the little settlement there. Got its back to us. Dreadful pre-aimed shot. That was a little bit high. Just need to aim for that. Low. That's it. That's where we want to hit. The nice soft spot underneath the back of the KV. But he's a little bit angled. There we go. There's the money shots. Taking the engine out, and we're getting nice penetrations now. One more shot should do it. Excellent. Didn't have a clue. So one TD left. Oh, poor tier three Marda. He's done well. Looks like he just took a shot from RT. And if we get this, we'll get a top gun. So I'm going in with reckless abandon to try and get the kill before anybody else does. And a pre-aimed shot. <laughs> it was worth the risk to try and take the tank out. And we get six kills. So we get our Top Gun medal for that. So how did we do overall? A lovely 50 grand in silver. 3,100 XP with a few missions. Ace tanker, and we came top with a wonderful 1,700 damage. So the M4 Sherman, a really adaptable, effective tank, and I really enjoy playing this tank.